let's talk about how to use this magical thing. It's called a paintbrush. To start your project today, you're going to be painting spirals. And you'll want to be pressing very lightly. So before you start painting, I want you to try painting an invisible spiral in the palm of your hand. Press very lightly, and if you do it correctly, it should actually tickle your hand. That means that you are pressing very lightly and you'll be able to paint a beautiful skinny line. If you press too hard with your brush, it won't tickle and you'll notice the bristles of your brush get kind of smashed. That's not how you'll want to paint your spiral. So remember, press very lightly when you're painting your spirals today. Your paintbrush is like a ballerina. She's got nice pointy toes. And when you're painting, you'll want to make sure that that paintbrush ballerina is always on her toes. And when you're using your paintbrush, don't hold it like you would a pencil. Instead, hold it straight up and down like a vertical line. Your paintbrush ballerina should always be on her tippy toes. She never ever scoots around on her bottom because nobody wants to go to the booty scooting ballet. Keep that in mind as you're painting and make sure to use a light pressure when you paint your spirals. All right, let's get started. Today we're using watercolor paint where you have warm colors and cold colors. Let's talk about the warm colors. Magenta, red, orange, yellow and bright yellow. Those are the warm colors. They remind us of things like fire. When you are painting today, you will be using the cold colors. The cold colors are these right here, like green, light green, blue, blue violet, violet, and indigo. Those are the cold colors. But look, my paint is broken. It's not working. You silly it's called watercolor paint because you have to add water. Since we're only using the cold colors, we're only going to wake up the cold colors of paint. Wake up, green. What's that? Wake up, light green. Hey, what's going on? Wake up, turquoise. I want to paint with you. Okay. Wake up, blue. Howdy. Wake up, indigo. What's up? Wake up, violet, because I love me some violet. Wake on up, violet. Hello there. All right, now all of our cold colors of watercolor paint are woken up and ready to go. So let's get started. What you're going to do is gently wipe your paintbrush across the paint. Remember, you want your paintbrush ballerina to have nice pointed toes. So you don't want to use your paintbrush and dig into the paint. To paint a spiral, start small and grow bigger and bigger and bigger. What? It's that easy. If you make sure your paintbrush ballerina is just barely touching your paper, you'll be able to make a really beautiful spiral. When you want to change colors, you have to do two things. You have to rinse your brush off in a cup of water and then wipe it across a little sponge. Now I'm switching to violet or purple and I'm making more spirals. I like to start my spirals by making them small and get bigger and bigger and bigger. I even have them bump into other spirals. You'll be amazed by the different colors that you'll see. Sometimes you can make a spiral by starting big and spiraling in smaller and smaller and smaller. You try both ways and see what way works best for you. If you make a boo-boo spiral, a spiral that eh, it's not your favorite, don't worry about it. Just keep spiral painting. You will get the hang of it. Stop and think maybe about what you didn't like about that spiral and how maybe your next one can be even better. I'm going to fill my entire paper with cold colors of spirals. If I notice at any time that my paintbrush is making a scratchy or a dry line, then that means my paintbrush is thirsty. It needs more water. It usually doesn't need more paint. It just needs water because it's thirsty. So don't let your paintbrush go thirsty. Continue painting those spirals until your entire paper is filled. On a brand new sheet of paper, let's make a snowman. Starting at the top, draw a straight line across. I'll wait, go ahead. Now let's make two lines that go down and down. Keep them short and then connect those two lines, making what shape? That's right, a circle, I mean a rectangle. You got me. 
I colored mine in because this is going to be my snowman's hat. Draw two more lines that come down, connect, and add some lines inside. If I'm going too fast, just pause me, and then you can catch up. There, the hat's finished. Now let's work on our snowman's face. I'm drawing one circle and another one. And if they're not the same size, it's okay. I'm going to add a little tiny highlight by making a little empty space that I didn't color in in the circles. A horizontal line for the carrot nose. Bring that line on back to create a cone kind of shape. A carrot is three-dimensional, so we want to make it look like it's a cone. Got it. Now let's make the mouth. I'm just tapping little lines to create a mouth for my snowman. Now I'm going to work on my scarf, making a line underneath his smile, two lines that are going to go down, down, and connect, kind of just like the hat that I made. Let's make some vertical lines inside, and then I think I'll make two long vertical lines. Oh, no I'm not. I'm going to connect the side of the face. There's one, and there's the other. Now, let's work on the bottom of that scarf. Two vertical lines that come down. Close it. Add some lines inside. Maybe some fringe. It's up to you. Now, my snowman only has two circles for his body. I'm going to put a little polka dot at the bottom of my paper. Now, that dot's just for me to see. So, I made it pretty small. I'm connecting from the bottom of my scarf to that dot for my snowman's body, and maybe a couple of buttons. Done. Now let's finish them off by adding some color, baby, color. For that, we're going to use chalk. Let's use some light blue chalk to make him look kind of cold. I'm going to start on the left side of my snowman, just coloring little circles of chalk all along the, say it with me, left side of my snowman. Once that's finished, I'm going to use one finger just one, and make little massage massage massages on that chalk. That'll help spread the chalk out a little bit and make it look nice and smooth and icy. It will also make my circles for my snowman no longer look flat, but fat. That means they went from being shapes to having form. If you want to add a little pink to the cheeks, go for it. You can either color or paint the parts of your snowman that you want to add a little bit more color to, like maybe your buttons or your scarf, your orange carrot nose. If you paint your scarf and the design on your hat, you might want to think about making a pattern. A pattern is a design that repeats. So you could do, I don't know, maybe red, blue, red, blue. That would be an A, B, A, B pattern. I'm also doing an A, B, A, B pattern. I'm making mine blue, yellow, blue, yellow. Once you're finished painting, we're going to let it dry before we add this cute little dude to that beautiful spiral background we made. Now it's time to cut him out. I want to be extra careful when I cut out my snowman because I don't want to accidentally cut off part of his hat or any other parts of his body. That would be terrifying. So I am cutting slowly and carefully. My scissors are always pointed outward. Look how much work my extra hand is doing. It's doing all of the steering. It's turning the paper the whole time that my scissors are opening and closing. By turning the paper so much, that means my scissor hand, all it has to do is open and close. Sometimes some of the paper gets in the way. It drives me bananas. If it also drives you bananas, just cut off some of that extra waste paper and don't forget to put it in the recycle bin. To add him to our background, we're going to put glue around the edges of the snowman. You never ever need to put a big old honking blob of glue in the middle. Just put it around the edges. And I like to rub the back of my paper for a while. This will make sure that it'll stick. If you flip your paper over and your snowman 
hasn't stuck yet, it's because you didn't give your glue enough grab time. You have to really make sure you give it enough grab time so it sticks. Last but not least, we could give him some arms. I'm just using scraps of brown paper. It might be fun to even go and get a stick from outside, or you can do what I'm doing. You could use some brown paper and make a letter Y. What's that? You don't have brown paper? Do you have a grocery bag? Not the plastic kind, but the paper kind? then bingo, you've got brown paper. If you wanted to, you could even make some boots for your snowman. I don't have any room. I'm just going to stick with my little stick arms. I'm excited to see how your snowmen turn out, how beautifully you paint your background, how amazingly you create your snowman, and add all of that color, baby color. So let's get started.